In month two, do you find yourself struggling to keep the commitments that you made in month number one? Finding yourself falling back into old ruts and don't know quite how to break the cycle? <laughs> well, plug into this next chapter for some advice that can help you out tremendously. My brother shared this story about when he was in high school and he was infatuated with this certain young lady and he finally mustered up all the courage inside of him and he walked up to her one day and said, will you go out with me? And her response wasn't yes, it wasn't no, it wasn't even maybe. Her response was something that he didn't even expect. He asked her, will you go out with me? And her response was, where to? Where do you want to take me? Now, my brother, he froze. Now, there's some dudes that are quick witted and smooth. This, this, this ain't him because he's transparent and he's honest. And on a deep level, he couldn't answer her question because he had no real direction for the relationship in the first place. Like, I have no real reason why I even really want to be with you. In other words, the relationship was never going anywhere. See, this sign says, take aim. If you say you want something and you have no direction or no real reason for why you're doing it, more than likely, it's not going to happen. And if it does, it's not going to last long. And the results will never be fulfilling because the reason why you're involved is undefined. If you have no goals, no plans, no direction, what you're really telling your mind is to engage in dead end endeavors. We are going to start to uncover the power of living by intention. Now there's a difference between living by intention and the power of intention. I'll explain. The other night, it was later than what I thought it was. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna find something to watch until I realized how late it was. So. I had started re-watching the movie Poetic Justice. I didn't get very far. I only watched like the beginning. Q-Tip and Janet were at the drive-in and she asked him a question. Do you love me? And he said, of course I do. And she says, okay, why? And he said, I love you cause you fine. Like that's it? Like that's the only reason? And she even said it. She said, oh, I see where this is going. Sometimes when we ask the right questions, we understand why we get the results that we get. We don't understand why we're not getting a deeper meaning out of life. And then we ask the right question and find out that the reason why we're not getting a deeper meaning is because we're involved in superficial endeavors. Look at the term poetic justice. This describes the power of intention. Poetic justice means I'm going to end up getting what I think I deserve in spite of the opportunity in front of me. So we have to be very mindful of our self-talk because if we want different results, we got to start singing a different song. In chapter 14, it was mentioned that the journey to inner peace starts when you stop allowing anything outside of yourself control your emotions. Last chapter, we talked about the cause and the effect might not be in your power, but you have the power to control how the effect has an effect on you. Once we make this decision, 
to live by intention, to not allow anything outside of ourselves to control our emotions, we'll start to see the difference because their why is deep. How does one live an intentional life? They develop a code. So let me read to you the definition of the word established, established, set up an organization system or set of rules on a firm or permanent basis. Once you've established your reason why, once you've established your non-negotiable code, then you have to make the decision to be devoted to that code. Let me read the definition of the word devote. To give oneself over to a cause, enterprise, or activity. Love, loyalty, or enthusiasm for a person, activity, or cause. What is your why? So in spite of my feelings, I'm going to follow my code non-negotiable. If I should happen to fall into a rut, I can get out of that thing because my why is deeper. My why is stronger than whatever it is. I have to ask myself the right questions as to why I'm doing what I'm doing and how did I get here? Am I influencing or was I influenced? And once I realize and I ask the right questions and I can make the correction. One of the things that helps me in spite of how I feel is the soundtrack that I play in rotation in my mind. Back in like 89, in the 90s, we didn't just have music, we had anthems. One of my favorite anthems of all time, Eric B and Rakim paid in full. Rakim said, thinking of a master plan. Why Rakim? Cause ain't nothing but sweat inside my hand. I've tried so many different things, but nothing has panned out. So I need to think of a higher plan, a bigger plan. The great Ayanla Van Zandt says the reason why we are in ruts is we play small games for small prizes. If what it is that you're after, isn't big enough to like scare you just a little bit, then you're not thinking high enough. We are not small minded people. Rakim is saying, I'm tired of these short term things. I got to see past the pain. I got to see past the immediate and I got to think long term. I got to think higher. He says, so I dig into my pockets, all my money spent. I dig deeper still coming up with lint. Like, trust me, I done tried. And I'm still coming up with nothing. So I start my mission, leave my residence. Listen, y'all, sometimes you gotta leave where you're at. You can't stay, you gotta take aim. You gotta go somewhere else. Sometimes we have to leave old mindsets behind. We have to leave old ways behind. We have to leave some old-minded people behind. We got to stop singing these old songs and start singing a new one. Thinking how I'm going to get some dead presidents. I need money. I used to be a stick up kid. So I think of all the devious things I did. Malcolm X said that the people whom he encountered in his life as he grew that were in the ghettos, the people that were looked down upon, the hustlers, the prostitutes, the pimps, the people that were running numbers. He said, in another world, in another society, in another reality, these same people could have been the greatest doctors, the greatest lawyers, the greatest mathematicians you would ever know, but because of their circumstances, they couldn't see past the short term. I used to roll up. This is a hold up. Ain't nothing funny. Stop smiling. Still don't nothing move but the money. These people felt robbed. So what did they do? They in turn robbed. Giving in to the nightmare that I have to steal and rob and scrape in order to just survive. But now I learn to earn cause I'm righteous. 
I feel great. Let's stop right there. This brother hasn't even made it yet. In spite of his past, he says, I'm righteous. I am. In spite of my past, I know I'm righteous. I'm bigger than this. I'm greater than my choices because I'm not my choices. I can choose something different. So maybe I'll search for a nine to five. If I strive, then maybe I'll stay alive. I recognize that if I keep living this way, if I keep going this same route, it's going to end up in a dead situation. If you're tired of dead end endeavors, then it's time to get up out of this rut and choose something different. But let's continue. So I walk up the street whistling this. He's singing this new song, feeling out of place. Cause man, do I miss a pen and a paper. Let's stop right there. I feel out of place because if I go this route, it's not going to still not going to yield what it is that I really want. Man, do I miss what it is that's in me, that gift that everybody said wouldn't amount to anything, but it's in me. So that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose to be my authentic self and do what it is that naturally comes to me. I'm taking the pen and I'm gonna write my own story my own way. How many of us are tired of doing things that we feel out of place doing just to make it when there's something that is in you, something, that gift that's in you, it just comes naturally. That's the thing that you should be doing. You should be living by intention. I'm going to make it work by doing what it is that I love. That way I can be paid in full. It will be fulfilling. Everything that I do comes from within and flows outward. Instead of me trying to get it from outward, it's backwards. <laughs> Yo, you can laugh and make fun of me if you want to. When you see me coming, there's an anthem in my head. My why has to be deep. I have to be my authentic self. I have to live by code. I have to live by intention. Instead of allowing things to just happen, I have to take the pen of my life and write my own story. And if you think this anthem stuff is a joke, I'm going to share something with you about the power of intention, about poetic justice about the difference between the power of intention and living by intention. So in the scripture, you have the children of Israel cried, deliver us, deliver us. We need help, deliver us. And then when help finally came, they were like, oh, wait, Moses, uh, mm -mm, you finna make things worse for us. But you asked for this. How many times have we prayed for something because we need help? And then that thing shows up and then we still have a problem. We're singing the same old song. That's how we stay in ruts. So watch this. You think it's a joke. It's not. Moses comes. Moses. Uh, no, nah, you getting us in trouble, man. I know we asked for help, but uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Until they got delivered, right? They're, they're on their way out. They encamp by the Red Sea. Here come Pharaoh and them, right? What's the first thing that they did? They cried the same song. Moses, you brought us out here to die. Are you hearing the power of intention? You brought us out here to die. Then they see the miracle of the Red Sea and they cross through, right? They start singing a new song. Yeah, you know, ah, joy and happy until they're out there in the desert 
and then they get thirsty and there's no water. So what, what happens? They start singing the same old song. Moses, you brought us out here to die. Then they get water, right? We hungry, Moses. You brought us out here to die. God rains manna from heaven and feeds them. They get the manna. We tired of this old stuff from the sky. Then they get all the way to the promised land. And they're told, hey, you're going to win this fight. Go take it. It's yours. Go take it. I brought you all the way here for this purpose. This is the reason for your journey is to provide you your own place. I promised you this. All you got to do is go take it. Oh, man, we can't do it. Do you see what's over there? Moses, you brought us out here to die. We, we were better off back there in slavery. What? Singing the same song. Poetic justice. So what happened? Everybody who continued to sing that same old song about you brought us out here to die. What ended up happening? They ended up dying. There were people that experienced the same things as them. They sang a different song. That's the difference between the power of intention and living by intention. Two different songs, same set of circumstances. What is it that you want? The challenge question is this. If you are in a rut right now, have you asked yourself the right questions? Have you defined your reason why? Is that reason why deep enough? If it's not, then maybe the thing that you're trying isn't what you should be doing. And if it is something that you need to be doing, I suggest that you establish a code of non-negotiable things. Find you an anthem that reinforces what you believe. If you really want to get out of the rut, if you really want to get out of the hole, do you have the courage to put down a shovel and start living an intentional life? To change the narrative in your life, take the next step. Invest in yourself and book a life strategy coaching session with me at www.beliefinteriordesign.com. Let's start the journey of making belief reality.